Today, inmates, we are in the barn fitting this brand new K3 to this R1250 GSA. This is not an install video, this is just showing you on the bike. This is the first one I've installed. I'm gonna let you know exactly what I think to it. So I haven't actually road tested this yet because this is the very first in of K3 that I've actually taken possession of. The rest of the batch, which I have on back order, is taking a little bit longer than usual. So thank you for all the patience for all the people who put in their pre-orders up to around a month ago. So this is the first one going on. I was meaning to put it onto one of my bikes, but I've already got a brand new K2 on my R1200 GSA, and I've just put a brand new K5 on my new R1250 GSA. Uh, there he is. Just been ceramic coated, so he's been drying himself off in the in the heat today. Just looks stunning. Anyway, back to the K3. Remember, this has got the K5. If you haven't seen that video, click on the link up above, and that'll show you the K5 on my bike. But. All about this bike here. Now, as you can see, I've still got the back off. I've already gone ahead and fitted this. This is just an, an empty box. So I've gone ahead and fitted it. I haven't quite put the back on because I thought I'd give you a quick look around and show you exactly how the K3 sits in the back of a GS Adventure or a GS and where I've mounted the lights on this bike. So first of all, this bike came in for a Denali D7 bundle and a sound bomb. I've gone ahead and fitted that to the bike. But then the customer also asked for a K3. Now this is my very first customer who ever even ordered a K3. So if anyone's out there thinking, hang on a second, I've ordered mine, I haven't got mine yet. He was my very first pre-order. He put it in a long, 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 long time ago. And he's basically got the one which was given to me a month before all the others arrived. Now, with the camera set up on this one, as a lot of you will already know, I do a very specialized grill. It's a BMW OEM grill, especially for the R1200 and the R1250 GSA, where I've modified it, put a nice rubber grommet in there, perfect size for the K2 and the K3 camera and also as on my one i've used the k5 rear camera in the front because the front camera is obviously got the dvr on it and it's also a slightly smaller aperture the actual the actual diameter of the lens so you'd need a smaller grommet anyway this customer he did actually order the grill but we both decided that it's probably best not fitting the grill because this customer has gone ahead and ordered that that really nice sexy bmw off-road screen which i absolutely love but it's for off-road use only he doesn't want to sacrifice that i don't blame him it's a gorgeous screen i really envy the people who have them on their bikes but if we stick the k3 front camera in the grill well, all he's going to be looking at is that curvature the crease and the dirt that's on the screen of that protector so i really strongly advised him to put it where we used to put it over a year or two ago on the k2 mounted on the turn signal so we've done that on the front and on the rear the customer also opted to have it side mounted on the turn signal as well rather than drilling the reflector which has become very popular it's very very nice when i'm out there on the road and i see another gs and i can see that the rear reflector has been drilled and i know that's because of me and that makes me feel great <laughs> it's, it's quite a feel good factor anyway let me show you around the bike okay so there is the new dvr as you can see there are no lights on this at all like the k2 historically had it had lights all over it with a button so you could see what it was doing but bearing in mind the dvr is underneath the seat well we can't see it can we so Inov have been really clever and decided to make a remote control like they've done for the k5 and what i've done is i've put that remote, remote control up top bearing in mind what we've done here is instead of connecting the Inov K3 DC converter, the power, to the battery, I've actually connected it to the fourth circuit, which is the yellow circuit in this instance, of the CanSmart, which is just here. So the connection is there. I've made it just there. And it's going directly into here. And we've set that port, we've set that circuit as an accessory with a 30 to 40 second timeout that will allow the DVR to capture that last bit of footage and save it to your SD card. And you'll see on here that the SD card slot is just inside here. And one of the wonderful things I love about this is to get the SD card out, you just push it with your finger. Whereas on the K2, you need to get something with a leading edge, like a screwdriver or a coin to try and get the SD card to eject. Whereas now it can all just be done with a push of any fat finger like mine. 
So I haven't done the, the tidiest of wiring jobs. It is very tidy. I think a lot of you would agree it's very, very tidy. But when I say I haven't done the tidiest, I haven't cut all the leads to length. They are wrapped around on each other because that would have been an extra expense for the customer. But it's not needed because he's only having one can smart. If he's having two can smarts under here, then I'd have obviously insisted on that. We've got the can smart power coming through here, under here, joining up underneath this covering. Also inside this covering are three harnesses, one for the sound bomb, one for the left D7 and one for the right D7. We've also got the front camera cable coming back through here again, which is coming around here. Camera connections are here, the front camera, and the rear camera, which is just there, is coming up through here, around here, and joining to here. Now, you can't get these connections back to front. They're all polarized connections. So as you're plugging the items into the DVR, there's six plugs coming off this DVR, as you're plugging them in, you can't get them wrong. Now, I must admit, it does feel like, it does feel like you are endlessly plugging gadgets into this DVR because we've got a front camera, we've got a rear camera, we've got a remote control, we have got a microphone, we've got the power, oh, and then we've got the GPS. So that's six things. So I've got the GPS down here. A lot of people will say, well, that can't see the sky, it's no good. Well. Uh, empirical evidence over the last year or two of fitting these, it works a treat down there and the, the GPS side of things work absolutely wonderful. So it's nicely hidden around down there. I've coiled the cable up just here, run it around as neatly as I possibly can going into the DVR. There's the rear camera there. That's just coming up underneath here. I found the little gap at the side around here as it comes in, just follows itself around. So looking at the remote control at the front, there it is. So as soon as we power the bike up, well, it's not as soon as, it takes about 10 seconds. So if I turn this on right now, and we just look at this and we'll see after about 10 seconds, this will start to fire up. There it is, can you see that? It's the green light has come on to say it's already recording. The GPS is currently red, and then the Wi-Fi is flashing blue right now. So that is powering up nicely, and the Wi-Fi will be available to see. Right, and so now we've got the top back on, and what I love about this is that the K3 slides beautifully underneath the, the rear tray here. So that is actually really, really space saving. I like it a lot. And something else to touch on is the microphone for the K3. If you can see it, I've nestled it down just here. So if the customer, he's uh, confirmed that he doesn't vlog, but if he decides he wants to vlog, there's a load of reeled up microphone cable here, which he can just unravel, pull it up, put it inside his helmet, and he can start doing some serious travel vlogging. Other than that, just leave it under the, under the lid of the bike and it'll do everything you need it to do and pick up a really, really good audio sound. Do you want a K3? I think they're gonna be on a pre-order situation for the next couple of months. That's my feeling when speaking to Inov. They're very, very high in demand at the moment. So it's all about getting in, ordering them. Don't wait until they come into stock because they probably won't be in stock as in like available on the shelf for you to buy for the next two months. Whereas if you put your order in, then the worst case scenario is you might be waiting maybe two to three weeks for it to come through, but at least you'll then be in the queue and you'll be able to get them. So right now I'm being limited to minimum orders. If I could, I'd put an order in for a hundred at a time, but they won't even let me do that. So we're obviously trying to control the flow of who's selling them, which is fair enough. Now, why would you buy this from me? I've, I've given reasons in the past about, you know, why well, you're buying it from me and you are my customer, you're a subscriber to me. I don't really make a lot of money out of YouTube and I don't really care about that side of things. I've just decided to market my company on YouTube. However, I appreciate, I've had upside down the whole time. I appreciate a lot of you want to connect this to your can smart or to a hex easy can instead of going direct to the switch power on your bike. Now, I've got no issues with going straight direct to the switch power on the bike, but I know a lot of you do. So this is a perfect opportunity. If you haven't got a can smart on your bike, if you navigate to the website and look for the K3, I'll put a link down below to this. You'll notice that you can buy this from X amount of price, 
but then you can also add an SD card or you can leave it off and you can also add a CAN Smart of your choice. Now you'll see numbers for the CAN Smarts, for example 11602, 11702, 11802, 11902 and I think it's 13,000, something like that, which is for the KTM. Now, if you don't know the number for your bike, we'll just click on the link in the description. That will take you through to a page where you'll figure out exactly which CAN Smart you need for your bike. So for instance, if you've got an R1200, R1250, GS Adventure liquid cooled, that would be 11602. If you've got an F850, F750, that will be 11702. Uh, same as with the S1000XR, that's also 11702. I think also the K1600, I think is 11702. I should know all this by now. It's all on there, so you get to know exactly which CAN Smart you need. So if you go ahead and get this from me and you want the CAN Smart, that's a really good opportunity for you to get a, a heavily discounted CAN Smart through me because you're getting the K3 from me. I can't and I won't be discounting any of the Inov products. I love the fact there's lots of brand protection all over Inov, so this will not be discounted. However, you can get the CAN Smart for it discounted from me. Also, I will be bringing an installation video on this so I can show you exactly how to connect it all up. Meanwhile, there are links to the K2 installation via the CAN Smart, which is pretty much the same. The only difference is you've got a remote control and you've got a very cool microphone. Right, until next time, Stay safe behind bars, the sun's shining. I'm gonna go for a spin actually. I'm gonna quickly put my clobber on, jump on this beast, and go for a, a nice summer evenings ride. Till next time, see you in the next one. Bye.